So, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. Yep. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. I will be reading from the English Standard Version. Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, <coughs> excuse me, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged? If his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols, and so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died, thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, again, thank you for this time that you've given us to have fellowship and to hear your word this morning. Oh Lord, it is our prayer that uh, in this afternoon we would just uh, delight on your word and we'll learn more about this um, uh, season, this holiday season that, we, that uh, the world has been celebrating, uh, oh Lord, and may we understand uh, the reason why it is being celebrated in the first place. Um, again, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right. So uh, on set, um, so again, uh, the, uh, the title of our Sunday school uh, this afternoon is Christmas Origins. I'm not here to, to tell you uh, right up front that I know the exact origin of Christmas or kung, kung ba, paano nagkaroon ng Christmas. Of course, there's really, it's gonna be difficult for, for us to, to really identify one specific origin. Okay, eto lang yon, eto yung reason why December 25 and all. It's very obvious we are not given a date for the birth of Christ in the scripture. It's not there, it's not written. It is not even commanded for us to mark a date and set that date apart uh, for us to be gathered and to meet. So it, it's, it's not there. It's not prescribed by God, right? So on set, I just wanna say that. Um, and later on, we hopefully we would know and we would understand wh uh, what, what, what uh, the origins were, all right? There are a lot. Okay? Maraming pinanggalingan kung bak pa paano tayo, paano nag, nag, naging ganito yung Christmas ngayon, why there were gift givings and all, why there's a Santa Claus, and so lahat yun nag, nagsama-sama na. Alright? And remember, we are in 2019 and there has been uh, thousands of years already, right? 2,000 years already since the birth of Christ. So, of course, a lot of ideas and activities and practices have been added to whatever, whatever we have now in, uh, in our idea of uh, Christmas. But also, uh, just to give you, before we continue, I just want to give you my references uh, in this study. Uh, you could look it up. I, I, uh, I heavily uh, uh, depended on these uh, books and uh, people, basically. So I, 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 I read Bah Humbug, 
um, how Christians should think about the Christmas holiday by uh, C. Matthew McMahon, the, uh, the one who manages the Puritan board, the Puritan's mind, sorry. Uh, and also I've, I've looked uh, at the Apology Studios, Jeff Durbin, and uh, in, in Jim, James White's series of church history, he, he specifically had excuse me, a topic uh, about the origins of Christmas, so you want, might want to check that out. And also, the, the book that James White has uh, repeatedly recommended is this book, Roger Beckwith's book, all right? So you can see that from there, Calendar and Chronology, Jewish and Christian. All right, so... Now, uh, before we begin, I just want to let you know that uh, through the course of time, there's actually two dates in, uh, for Christmas. That's December 25 and January 6. Okay? Actually, dun nga nang galing yung 12 days of Christmas. Kasi it's, it's a long season that is being celebrated by people. 12 days of Christmas. That's not, not just one day. From December 25 to January 5. Okay? Right, so December 20, uh, January 6 was celebrated mostly in the East, in Egypt, in Asia Minor, okay? while December 25 was celebrated mostly in the West. Depending on where, where you at, at kung anong time period yan, so you're either December 25 or January 6. Now, in the fourth century, uh, given that there's two dominant dates that represent Christmas, in the fourth century, majority of them celebrated it for the entire 12 days, yung buong season na yun. Okay? Actually, in every day, meron silang tinatawag na, okay, so December 25, this is the day of blob something, and iba-iba pa yun. Meron silang mga ganong, uh, yung pinanggalingan nun, yung fourth century. But, as we know, paano naging December 25 na sa atin? Okay? Again, uh, I would like to give theories later on. Uh, I cannot give a, spe a, a specific answer kung, kung, kung paano, one specific timeline, kasi there have been a lot of uh, uh, happenings all throughout history. So the question is, bakit de December 25 ngayon and not January 6? Was Jesus really born on December 25? And I guess more, more than the question, why do we have Christmas trees? Why do we have Christmas uh, elves? Meron pa no, di ba? Elves. And then gift givings. Why do we have these? I mean, ang pinaka question, bakit December 25? And we have, uh, there are theories. Now, I will present to you two specific approaches. The first is, there is a theory about Christianizing the Christmas. So there's the Christianization theory na tinatawag, or the history of religion theory. Now, the history of religion, it is a movement. Okay? When you say history of religion, these are a group of people who are, you, you, know, you know, you've heard of evolutionists, right? Those people who try to trace our origins, the origins of mankind from uh, apes or whatever, but these are like evolutionists, but of religion. Okay? So they try to trace religion back from whatever pag paganic or pagan uh, uh, belief there were before. Okay? So ito yung mga history of religion movement. Para silang evolutionists, but of religion. And then secondly, we have the calculation theory. So... So again, in the Christianization theory, um, the idea is that Christians in the time of their persecution, parang sinabi nila na, okay, let's see, we're getting persecuted by the pagans, let's see how we can look more like them. Okay? So parang ganun yung idea nito. Ganito yung, pino, ito yung inaano nilang belief. Okay? So the idea is that Christians paralleled the Christmas story to what pagans originally had. Okay? Oh, these pagans are, were worshipping some god. 
uh, we have our God, we, have, we, we, we believe in Jesus Christ, and so let's make something up just like what they are doing, but focusing on our God, not theirs. So parang ganun yung theory ng Christianization. They were trying to Christianize these pagan uh, festivals. And one of these festivals, and probably one of the most famous ones, is the uh, Feast of Saturnalia. Uh, it, it began in 84 BC and ended in 5th century. Now Saturnalia, it was the Roman festival of the god Saturn, right? It was celebrated between December 17 to December 23. And there's a massive public sacrifice on the temple of Saturn, followed by several days of feasting, may gambling, may drinking. So from December 17 to December 23, merong ganon, right? They were giving gifts, and most notably is during the time of the Feast of Saturnalia, there's what we call the role reversal. And as you know, in Rome before, uh, uso yung uh, slaves. Okay? I mean, bawat bahay meron silang sariling slaves. Talagang binili nilang slaves. So during Saturnalia, and of course the slaves are looking forward to this feast every year, during Saturnalia, that's where the time that, that's the time where they get to reverse their roles. Na yung mga slave owners become slaves and yung slaves become slave owners. But then again, these are just uh, they were just acting. Pero nauutusan nila yung mga owners nila. Uutusan nilang gumawa ng mga bagay na yung mga slaves mismo ay ginagawa. It's a holiday when slaves were encouraged to even dine with their owners, or even talk back to them, even make them serve the slaves. So again, remember, Rome was a slave-owning society. So Saturnalia was a domestic religious holiday, specifically designed to reverse what was considered the divinely ordained natural order of society. And the slaves were allowed to dine again with their owners, would boss them around. So pwede nilang gawin yon during this festival. And ano bang origin ng Saturnalia? Uh, ang belief nila sa, sa, sa God nila na Saturn was si, si, si Saturn ruled Italy as a king and for him, there should be no slaves that should exist. In yung uh, gusto ni God, ni yung God nila si Saturn. So, yun yung, yun yung basically ginagawa nila. And again, if you just search the internet about the origin of Christmas, this is the first uh, origin, quote unquote, that, that the internet will show you. Saturnalia. It came from, Christmas came from, or originated from the feast of Saturnalia because people were giving gifts and it was during the time the same as Christmas. Another origin that people are saying na kung saan ang galing ang Christmas was of the festival of Natali Invicti. November, this is December 25. It's, it started in, on AD 274 by a Roman emperor. And it was a festival of the sun god Sol Invictus. Okay? And then even yung muka ni Sol Invictus, naka in, naka merong inscription sa mga coins. Pero yung last inscription nun was found in AD 387 and then afterwards wala na. But then again, people say that Christmas originated from either Saturnalia or from Sol Invictus, kasi December 25 yung birthday. December 25 yung feast. So most likely, the Christians want to Christianize this festival and, and yeah, we have Christmas. Palitan na lang natin sa Sol Invictus ng Jesus Christ and that's it. So that's the idea. Okay? And another, and by the way, um, this cult died in AD 387 because there was a rise of Christian theologians uh, during that time. 
uh, na who preached against Sol Invictus uh, or the religion of Sol Invictus. And one famous theologian who preached against this heavily was Augustine of Hippo. So he's one of them, okay? In AD 387. And another, Origin, na sabi ay ang Christmas ay galing sa religion na to, is Mithraism or the god Mithras. By the way, hindi ko to, hindi ko sila inaano sa inyo, ha? these are her pagan gods. Now, Mithras, it's, it was said that Mithras was born on December 25. Oh, okay. So basically, baka doon ang galing yung Christmas natin. And maybe the Christians before wanted to, to, to make a Christian out of whatever festival Mithraism has. So uh, we're gonna make uh, our own. So ganyan yung idea. Okay? So again, those historians who held to history of religion theory claims that Christians paralleled Christmas to what the pagans had to be specific, Mithraism. But there's a problem here. The problem here is that Mithraism became popular from second to third century. But in the fourth century, again, like I said a while ago, Christianity was on the rise. I mean, having Augustine, right? And the Council of Nicaea during that time battling heresies, talagang on the rise ang Christianity. Sama mo pa si Constantine, the emperor. So talagang on the rise sila. At yung mga pagan religions na to, sobrang collapsing. So, to say, to say that Christmas originated from these pagan religions from first century to third century, and just the Christians just wanted to be like the pagans and to have an, our own festival just like the pagans is of course wrong. Kasi yung mga pagan religions that time was declining already. Okay? So, why would the Christians be looking to borrow from what's diminished or decreasing? Again, yun yung idea nito na the Christians wouldn't wouldn't want to create a, another season paralleled to these pagan uh, religions. Okay? So, again, I've mentioned a while ago that the history of religion movement is like the evolutionists, but of religion. But what they did was they constantly looked for parallels as results to what is called parallelomania. Parallelomania. Whatever they have before, they want to parallel uh, what they believe in to what the pagans believe. So, okay, they have Saturnalia, we will have our own. Okay? Ano yung mga, sino yung mga modern history of religion movement uh, proponents? Okay, I'll give you some examples. I'm not sure if you've heard of the Zeitgeist movie. Yeah, these guys are... Uh, are history of religion movement, including Bill Maher, who made the Religious movie. It's a movie mocking uh, Christ, basically. And Bill Maher, what he was doing in this movie was he was uh, interviewing people outside and asking them, don't you know Jesus Christ came from Mithraism? Mithras, who was born on December 25, and also Christ was copied uh, from Horus, the, the pagan god, Horus, was also born on December 25. He was born of a virgin. He, he, he died and he rose again. So see, Jesus Christ's story was just a copy-paste of these pagan religions. So yun yung argument ni Bill Maher doon sa mga tao, if you watch religious. By the way, it's in YouTube, so if you want to watch. Okay? And also, uh, D.M. Murdoch, the uh, babayan, uh, he was also a proponent of that movement. Okay? So, yun yung idea nila. They, they, meron silang idea na itong parallelomania. The, even Christ, Christmas, yung December 25 date was just parallel to what they have in history. Okay. So, for example, so this is a picture of Horus. They said that he was born on December 25. 
he, he was in, he has incarnate he is an incarnate into human fl flesh born of a virgin baptized by anup the baptizer had 12 disciples died and rose again um, so there so that's the idea na okay uh, yung pinaniniwalaan mo na pinanganak ng December 25 is just copied from Horus, from the story of Horus. And they say, they claim that Horus uh, mythology, myth, yung, myth, yung story ni Horus was way before. Uh, one proponent of this is Tom Harper and he wrote a book, The Pagan Christ. And he said, all the legends about a virgin birth, a star in the east, three wise men bearing gifts, the evil power that tries to take a special child's life and angelic messengers have, as we have seen, been enacted many times before in the midst of Egypt and other places too numerous to mention. Okay, so this is that the idea. So doon ang gagaling yung idea again of Christmas comes from a pagan or from pagan roots. Okay? But it, these idea have been, ideas have been heavily refuted as well. And one of them was an apologist whose name was Blake Junta. And he said, it should be noted that there are, in fact, several Horuses over the course of 5,000 years. Several versions of Horus crop up and die down, giving mythicists almost limitless material to cherry pick from throughout history and combine in convoluted ways to make Horus appear as Jesus-like as possible. So there have been hundreds of Horuses in mythology, in, 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 in all throughout history. Okay? And they have tried their best. Myth mythicists, yung mga, yung mga naniniwala sa mga ganyan, they tried to cherry pick the story of Christ and then they applied it to Horus. That's basically it. And then use it as an argument using one Horus to, 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 to have that Jesus story. Pero maraming Horuses, sabi nga ni Blake. So, berong Horus the sun god, Horus foremost of Kem, napakarami yan. Actually, hindi ko na nilagay lahat. Alright? Si Horus the Sun God, uh, yan yung usually na ginagamit na katulad daw ni Christ. So basically, yung mga stories ng mga yan, kinumbine nila into just one. So for example, Horus the Sun God became conflated with Horus the son of Isis and Osiris. Through these iterations, he moved from being the brother of Seth to son of Osiris and nephew of Seth and endured several other evolutions. Basically, their story evolves. Okay? It was these people who at a later time evolved the myth that is Horus. So that is Christ the Christianization theory. It is to say that, okay, I'm not gonna celebrate Christmas this season because galing sa pagan roots. And, and, and if someone defends that and say, na ah, galing yan sa Saturnalia, galing yan sa Mithraism na religion, I mean, we can say that uh, during that time, in Mithraism, in, during, in the 4th century, Christianity was on the rise. And relig pagan religions were declining. So we can't say that Christians during that time was trying to copy the pagans. Uh, hindi ganon, kasi on the rise na ang Christianity. So again, this is the Christianization theory that people use para ma masabi sa atin na, okay, you should not celebrate Christmas because it has pagan roots. All right, so that is the first. And by the way, sorry, na ano ko na lang din, yung December 25th, the date na birthday ni Sol Invictus was, uh, came from just one source. And this is from this guy, si Dionysus Bar Salibi. Okay, and it's from this resource, yung chronograph. So yun lang. So isa lang ang source nun for us to, to say that it came from such uh, pagan religion. Second is the calculation uh, theory. This is the next prevailing theory which hypothesizes that many early Christians believed Jesus was conceived and crucified uh, on the same day. 
Uh, basically, they, they said na they actually gave a specific date sa mismong, uh, uh, they gave Christian estimates ng pagkamatay ni Christ, March 25, and April 6, depending on how you calculate it. Now, in the Jewish calendar, iba kasi yung tawag nila. Hindi April, hindi March, hindi May. Tawag nila doon, iba-iba. Merong Tishri, merong Nisan. So, iba-iba. Now, hindi, I cannot equate March to their Nisan. Kasi, nagvavary talaga. Iba. Okay? Now, but in, their, in the Jewish calendar, they have... Uh, estimated na it's either March 25 or April 6 ang death ni Christ. This because during, uh, as we know, Christ died during the Passover and this was the time na, 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 na locate nila tong date na to as the Passover during that time, March 25 and April 6. Therefore, they dated Jesus' birth to December 25th. So, here's the reason why. Sorry. Here's the reason why. Remember, Christ died on the Passover. And during that time, um, what the calculation, is, calculation theorists did was to look for, uh, they, 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 nakita nila yung Luke chapter 1 where they saw Zechariah, okay, who, is, who was a priest. And nung time na yun sa Luke chapter 1, he was asked to become, he was a priest, and then he was, he, he burned incense during that time. And yung time na yun was the Passover. Okay? Now, kinount nila yun from that time up to, tas kinount nila hanggang December 25 na gets nila na yung pala'y pinanganak si Christ. Now, titingnan natin yun mas thoroughly. Okay? So, again, early Christian estimates of Jesus' death, March 25 or April 6, Plus nine months, it becomes December 25th or January 6th. Now, uh, let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 8 to 11. Now, while he was serving as priest before God when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So, here's the thing. So Luke chapter 1, where uh, Zechariah was burning incense, he was the priest back there. And by the way, Maraming priest nung time na yon. If you go to 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 24, makikita nyo doon where the priests were grouped. First group, second group, third group. Tapos makikita nyo din na merong, I think, I forgot the, the group number, ni Abijah sa 1 Chronicles 24. And then when you look at Luke chapter 1, it says there that Zechariah was from the group of Abijah. Okay. So it means that Zechariah was a priest back then. And he was, what he was doing was, uh, nung time ng Luke chapter 1 was actually the day of atonement. Or yung one day where the priests would actually serve in the temple. So in Luke chapter 1, when Zechariah was serving, it was in the, during the day of atonement. And it was in mid-September. Okay? And then, it says in Luke chapter 1, verse 23, he went home and he rested after a few days. Uh, usually, a priest, after serving in the temple, it usually, it usually takes four to five days. Okay? He ha they have to stay there. So, that should be the end of September already. And then, it says in Luke chapter 1, after what? Five months tinago daw ni Elizabeth. Remember, si Zechariah yung tatay ni John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1, if you look there, nung umuwi na si Zechariah, nagpahinga ng uh, another five months si, si, si Elizabeth, uh, tinago niya yung pagbubuntis niya, and then afterwards, doon na tayo sa story when the angel Gabriel showed himself to Mary. Sabi doon sa Luke chapter 1, in the sixth month, 
Ibig sabihin, on the sixth month ng panganganak ni Elizabeth, who was the mother of John the Baptist, doon nagpakita si Gabriel kay Mary. So that was the end of March, the Annunciation, when the time was Gabriel showed himself to Mary. So six month pregnant nito si Elizabeth na nanay ni John the Baptist. So during that time, that was the end of March, at the same time, six months na si Elizabeth, and yun yung time na na-conceive si Jesus Christ nung nag-announce si Angel Gabriel. So from March, end of March, count nine months, we have December. Okay? So again, yun yung birth ni Christ. So this is the calculation theory. Again, uh, they have uh, chosen March 25 before because it is the, uh, for Jew the Jewish calendar, it was the most uh, exact date when the uh, Day of Atonement happened during the time of Zechariah. So they just, they just had to count nine months. Of course, hindi naman tayo 100% sure whether uh, saktong nine months yun, di ba? Minsan kasi napapaaga, minsan nadidelay ng two weeks. So, hindi natin 100% sure yun, right? But then again, this is how they got December 25. And again, in 1st century, 2nd century, the birth of Christ was not celebrated. Uh, and there are historians, specifically in Julius Africanus and Hippolytus, who first dated the conception to March 25th. And so, they, they, they made December 25 then, the birth of Christ after counting nine months. Other Christians calculated the conception to April 6, kaya tayo merong January 6. Okay? So again, January 6 was celebrated mostly in the East, Egypt, in Asia Minor. December 25 was celebrated mostly in the West. Now, eventually, January 6 lost out to December 25 in popularity. Um... I mean, napakarami nang nangyari, thousands of years. But even to this day, there's an actual church who celebrates Christmas every January 6, and that is the Armenian Orthodox Church. Hindi to Armenian na, na hindi Calvinist Armenian. It is in Armenia, okay? Armenian Orthodox Church. And they claim to have apostolic evidence not only to when they celebrate Easter, but also to when when to celebrate the birth of Christ. And these are the two, two theories. Calcul for me, calculation theory, for me, is the most convincing theory because Christians did not try to Christianize and model their holidays from pagans. Uh, while we're not 100% sure of the exact date when Jesus was born, I find the evidences from Scripture in the calculation theory more convincing than theories that are forced and historically inaccurate. But it is not to say that some elements in our Christian Christmas celebration uh, are not directly from, from other sources, other than Christian sources. Okay? Some of them may be from pagan roots, really. And if that's true, uh, most of them absolutely have nothing to do with the birth of Christ. So, tinakil lang natin kanina basically was yung, yung date kung kailan siya pinanganak. But then, there are still Christians who say na I won't celebrate Christmas because uh, the Christmas trees uh, did not come from the Bible or any word of God and all, blah, 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 gift giving, hindi galing doon, and all, Christmas lights, and all. So, yun. Um, I can give you some examples. Uh, they say that the Christmas trees are originated from uh, even from Saturnalia, sabi nila, uh, meron, maraming origins. But I'll show you na specifically the time when the Christmas trees were actually put into homes started in the time of Martin Luther. And uh, it was said that Luther was the one who began to bring a fir tree or an evergreen tree inside the home. And he was walking home through the woods and nakita siyang uh, uh, magandang puno where 
na natatakpan noon yung may mga stars na kumikinang and all sa likod so in his view napakaganda so ang ginawa niya kinat down niya yung tree at inuwi niya sa bahay para pakita sa wife niyang si Katarina uh, so that that yun yung sabi nila na nag-originate daw yung Christmas trees um, ano pa Santa Claus uh, as we as you learned in the past week na si Santa Claus has nothing to do with Jesus Christ um, we know that originally he was a uh, one of the participants in the Council of Nicaea and naki, doon sa story nga na hindi niya ma, hindi niya matiis yung heresy ni Arius so sinampal niya or sinuntok niya si uh, Arius uh, of course hindi natin pwede gawin yon uh, as you know si si Nicholas of Myra during that time na church discipline siya after niyang ginawa to and take note yung church discipline noong time na yon um, nakukulong sila so nakulong si si Saint Nicholas but then si Nicholas uh, kilala siya for his uh, generosity so nagbibigay talaga siya ng mga regalo sa mga uh, sa mga bata and so also some say na even sa Saturnalia daw galing yung gift giving uh, I believe that is uh, too forced as well so there's a lot of elements so we can say na galing sa iba't ibang sources at nag-add up na lang sila dito sa season natin at it formed of what we know as Christmas and so for for Saint Nicholas uh, it was the pagans and the Roman Catholics who made him a public Christmas figure so again sila yung gumawa nun, hindi mga Kristiyano uh, and actually gumawa pa sila ng Saint Nicholas Day uh, every December 6 and e- every December 6 what they do is they actually celebrate the Saint Nicholas Day and worship on that day nagmimisa sila Roman Catholics so they had an actual mass for Saint Nicholas Day and people were giving gifts to each other in the name of Saint Nicholas. So, so there. Now, we can say na ang daming elements ng Christmas at nanggaling yun sa pagans. I say, absolutely true. But here, I have some points that we need to consider as well. And ano dapat yung attitude natin as Christians toward this season and towards people who actually celebrate it and those people who do not, who chose to not celebrate it. Now first, we need to understand that we were all used to be pagans. Um, totoo yun, right? Galing din tayo sa pagiging pagans. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3 is, I think, the most descriptive of how paganic we were uh, before we were made alive by Christ and you were dead in trespasses and sins we were walking and following the course of this world we were following Satan the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath like the rest like the rest of mankind so that's the first point understand that Lahat tayo ay, we were, sabi nga ni Pastor Mark kanina, we were all enemies of God. Um, pagans, to be specific, they worship other gods than Christ, than, than the Trinity. And ganun din tayo noon. It's maybe some, uh, some other god that we worship. Second, if we violate other people's conscience and tell them not to celebrate Christmas, because of its pagan roots, we should be consistent by not celebrating or owning other things or activities we have or we do that also has pagan roots. Now, for those married people who have wedding rings, uh, these are used in, in Roman countries before for idol, for idol worship. So if we say that we, okay, let's not celebrate Christmas because it came from pagan roots, then let's remove our wedding. No, just kidding. Um, ganon din, yung idea, right? Also, uh, Thursdays come from Thor, Thor's day. Uh, you know Thor, the, the <laughs> mi- mythological creature, huh? Thor, Norse god, yes. The Marvel guy, yes. 
So Thursday. <laughs> so dun din galing yun. So are we saying that we're not gonna celebrate? If your birthday falls on a Thursday, we're not gonna celebrate it. So okay, it's Thursday today. It's Thursday today. I'm not gonna go outside. I'm just gonna stay here, so, diba? So, but you see. So the idea is that pagans do not own trees. They don't own lights. They don't own gifts and days and the stars. God does. So I think that's a good reminder for all of us to have this kind of attitude. Third, anything can become a symbol. We can give it the meaning that we choose to give it. So for example, the donkey was a symbol of prestige that kings and royalties would ride. Now, an ass is a symbol for jerks and... can become a symbol. <laughs> so there, we, we, we can't be too harsh to our fellow Christians who chose to celebrate Christmas. Ah, kasi ito ay galing sa ganito. But again, those are symbols from pagans before and we can choose to give it another meaning, basically. Fourth, and I think this is the most important one, Christians are at liberty to celebrate or to not celebrate Christmas. You are free to celebrate it. So this is not me being the Christmas Grinch and telling you not to celebrate your Christmas season at home. No, of course, you are at liberty to celebrate it. Now, if you, are, if you choose not to celebrate it, to, uh, Due to the fact that Christmas is not instituted by God, the Lord's Day, that's fine. I think, I think, uh, in my own opinion, and this is not, this is not, this is, hindi naman inaano ko na ito yung opinion ng lahat dapat. I think, if we choose not to celebrate it, this is dapat for this reason. It's because we know that it has, it has not been instituted. Not because it came from any pagan roots. Okay? But if you choose to, to not celebrate it if, because of pagan rules or even this reason, that's perfectly fine as well. Okay? Uh, you know that um, Christmas was not specifically set apart by God and the only day that was set apart by God was Sabbath and in the Old Covenant, it was from Friday night to Saturday night but since the Old Covenant was abrogated, and we are now in the new covenant, and we st are still obliged to obey the law of God, we are still to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Now, our Christian Sabbath, as the New Testament tells us, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul tells the disciples to collect money on the first day of the week, and we are also told in John, in Revelation, in Revelation chapter 1, John, uh, during that time, he, uh, it was the Lord's Day. <clears throat> it was the first day of the week. So, may kita natin sa New Testament that there is this one day that was set apart for worship, and that is Sunday. And that is our Christian Sabbath. And again, as Christians, we are still obliged to obey the law, the Ten Commandments. Uh, not, of course, as a way of salvation, but a way of life. And kailangan nating sundin yung fourth commandment and that is to remember to keep it holy. Now again, if you have that conviction not to celebrate other days, days other than uh, Lord, the Lord's Day, that is perfectly fine. Sabi nga ni John Calvin, isa sa mga 
ayaw ng Christmas. Now I see here, and it, this was his sermon on Christmas Day, 1551. Now I see here today more people that I am accustomed to having at the sermon. Why is that? It is Christmas Day. And who told you this? You poor beasts. Wow, that is a fitting euphemism for all of you who have come here today to honor Noel Christmas. Did you think you would be honoring God? Consider what sort of obedience to God you're coming this place. In your mind, you're celebrating a holiday for God or turning today into one, but so much for that. In truth, as you have often been admonished, it is good to set aside one day out of the year in which we are reminded of all the good that, is, that has occurred because of Christ's birth in the world and in which we hear the story of his birth retold, which will be done Sunday. But if you think that Jesus Christ was born today, you are as crazed as wild beasts. For when you elevate one day alone for the purpose of worshiping God, you have just turned it into an idol. True, you insist that you have done so for the honor of God, but it is more for the honor of the devil. Now what John Calvin is saying, is not basically condemning these people. What he's saying was, they are more celebratory during Christmas than the Lord's Day. That was his point. And ganun din basically yung point natin ngayon. It's not bad. But try to step back and examine our priorities, yung sarili natin, examine natin. Are we more excited for the Lord's Day or sa one day a year na, inor, na nagginawa ng tao over sa inordain ng Panginoon? Hindi ko pala nalipat kanina, sorry. Alright, sige. Okay, so next. Christians are free to celebrate it to remember, commemorate the birth of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are at liberty, you are free to do so, but again, uh, examine yourself kung mas, 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 ka, mas nag-worship ka pa ata sa Christmas Day compared sa mismo Lord's Day. Okay? Again, there's no biblical mandate against birthday celebrations or wedding anniversaries or parties. If Christians want to have a worldwide celebration of the birth of Christ, then they are absolutely permitted to do so. But if you're going to celebrate Christmas, make sure you don't treat it in a more elevated way than the Lord's Day. Now in the passage we read a while ago, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 13, Paul was telling the Corinthian church to watch out when they eat the food offered to idols, that the eating itself is not bad, but making others stumble because of it is considered sin. Now, question is, did Paul have any problems eating meat sacrificed to idols? Did he have a problem with his conscience to participate in something that had pagan roots? Not at all. His conscience was clear knowing that food does not commend us to God, whether we eat it or not. I mean, trees do not commend us to God or gifts. This is why, this is why we, sh we, we should let other Christians who celebrate Chris Christmas to let them be. They are at liberty. Okay? Even, even if these elements come from pagan roots, even kung mismong December 25 ay ga ay doubt, even kung galing yun sa Saturnalia. Who cares? Paul didn't have problem celebrating or eating a food offered to idols. Now, in our confession of faith, God alone is Lord of the conscience and He has left it free from human doctrines and commandments that are in any way contrary to His word or not contained in it. So, believing such doctrines or obeying such commands out of conscience is a betrayal of true liberty of conscience. Requiring implicit faith or absolute and blind obedience destroys liberty of conscience and reason as well. But on the next article, he's saying, uh, basically, this article, too, is basically saying, they, they're basically saying that our conscience should be captive by the word of God alone. But, in the third article, it says, those who use Christian liberty as an excuse to practice any sin or nurture any sinful desire 
pervert the main objective of the grace of the gospel to their own destruction. And they completely dis destroy the purpose of Christian liberty. This purpose is that we, having been delivered from the hands of all our enemies, may serve the Lord without fear, in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our lives. So again, a Christian is at liberty to celebrate it, but as we know, it is not a mandated day. So please, make sure that we revere the Lord's day more than any other days. But you're free to celebrate it. I think malino naman siguro sa inyo. Okay. And lastly, well, this should be an opportunity to evangelize. I think it should be uh, a, a task for every Christian. I mean, people are talking freely about Christ more than any time of the year. It's like the world is doing the heavy lifting for us by playing songs uh, about Christ or heralding His message about God saving sinners through Jesus, then let us also use that opportunity to show them and to tell them not just about His birth, but about His life, His death, and His resurrection. That ends our study this afternoon. Uh, next week, uh, we will have Pastor Mon who will lead us in uh, worship and also in Sunday school. So, worship service, his topic was, is about elder duties to members and then kabalik taranon yung Sunday school, members to elders. And I hope this would help us uh, next week, uh, next month when we constitute 